We need to talk about weather. It is, um, it's, it feels pretty nice out right now, Chris, but I know you're following two yet to be named storms, invests eyes the eyes have it don't they yeah and there will be an eye name from this and oh. uh we're going to take you to a meteorology class because this is really going to be a unique setup for one just going to go right to this graphic what you're looking at is uh, two potential paths of these two systems we now have a 90 90 percent chance whenever those numbers match that means within the next two days the national hurricane center is anticipating this to either become a tropical depression or a tropical storm so i think as early as today we're talking about Tropical Storm Umberto, and that's going to be that wave to the right. Meanwhile, the one that has a 30 to 80% chance, so I think likely by day three of the forecast, day four, so that would bring us into about Friday into Saturday, that could become either a Tropical Depression or a Tropical Storm Imelda. But these two are going to interact with one another and we'll talk about as close of a call as we possibly can come. Now, this is not concrete, what I'm about to show you, but it is a really unique setup. So as we just mentioned, we could keep the fancy names Invest 93L, Invest 94L, but that's going to be a nightmare. But eventually they are going to be named, as I mentioned, once these two storms move to the north. But here is an example of a model comparison. Now, this is the model number one and model number two. I want you to just focus in on the two blue circles that we have here. So these two blue circles in this model run has by Monday at 8 p.m., one storm system be dangerously close to the Carolinas, and another one well off towards the east close to Bermuda. Now, I want to measure the center of these two. They're about 550. 50 miles apart. The reason why that is significant, because when storms are within about 1,000 miles of each other of this magnitude, they can go through a unique setup called the Fujiwara effect. I was mentioning this yesterday. So this was invented by Dr. Fujiwara in the 1920s, who discovered that when low pressure systems become within 900 to 1,100 miles of one another, that they can pivot around one central point. They almost share wind fields. And then at that point, Sometimes they can just shift the path of one another if they're equal size, but then sometimes it can cause the other one to weaken. So the reason why I'm bringing this up is not just to teach you a random meteorological fact, is that we very much could be dealing with the Fujiwara effect, saving our forecast. So bringing up to this point, you can see that those two circles, one heading right towards the Carolinas, but watch what happens. This model run has one start to shift its way further off towards the east. That other model run, the one that you're seeing in the yellow, I think it's kind of out to lunch. It doesn't even have that other wave forming. And uh, I don't think that's going to come to fruition. Earlier, it had the other ones combining into one super storm. So I'm going to say, all right, uh, chill yellow model. And then you can see that uh, that storm number uh, one that's off towards the east does really start to blow up and the other one starts to weaken. So I want to show you a better look at this. So just focusing in on the highlighted area, is here's the potential path that they're going to take so the one to the right likely is going to be umberto the one to the left is likely going to be imelda watch what happens once it gets a little bit closer this is crazy so we're anticipating that wave number one to move to the carolina coast but then it starts to push back out to sea and it's all because if you look really closely you can see almost a figure eight that is those windshields being formed so brother umberto takes imelda by the hurricane hand and tries to drag her back out. Now, this is just a scenario. These storms aren't even named. This is one of the more complex systems that you can have, because if you have one storm system with a complex upper level flow, that's difficult. When you have two, we're talking about craziness. So how our forecast is going to be affected all depends on what these two do, because we're talking about one storm aiming at sites right towards the Carolina highways and literally being pulled back. Now, there are chances that Umberto can go its own separate direction and this doesn't happen, but this is becoming more and more a possibility but there's also one more player. That is a cold front and an upper level low. So if we're talking about the most advanced meteorology, this has not been an easy forecast, but that's the advantage that we have here on WCNC Plus and the Impact Studio. I can bring all the weather jargon to you, and I'm going to try to make it as easy to understand as possible. Everyone knows the Heisman Trophy, right? Well, that's exactly what this cold front's trying to do, putting up the Heisman. As that cold front is moving off towards the East Coast, we also have this upper level low. So 
it's not just about what's happening here at the ground or even a mile up. We're talking about atmospheric streets, the jet stream that's thousands of miles, or not thousands of miles, thousands of feet up in the atmosphere, uh, up to about five plus miles, and that could be guiding our general flow. But whenever you have even the mid-levels of that upper level low, that can also glide a flow right along the shoreline and kind of guide things back out to sea. That's exactly what happens here. That front stalls out, so you have two things kind of working at each other. You also have the Bermuda High that's trying to steer things out because really a hurricane forecast is all about the flow of the atmosphere, these atmospheric streets. But since you have such a unique one here that you have one blocking, one pulling, we do have the setup that we are pulling this back. Now, it depends on the timing. This one storm system could speed up, the other one could slow down, and uh, Imelda potentially could make landfall and then be pulled back. There's still gonna be impacts along the Carolina coast. So I'm not saying that don't worry about it, nothing impactful here, because also there's a big island in the middle of the two storm systems. We're talking about Bermuda. But if we're talking about a worst case scenario and best case scenario, the better scenario is that we get this system pulled away. Because truly, if we didn't have Umberto or that other blocking system, we'd be talking about a landfalling hurricane or tropical storm here in the Carolinas. There's also a lot of other complex situations that are not worth your time for me to mention, just letting you know that this is a very difficult forecast that is going to be forever changing. I literally made this map that you're looking at uh, around 2.45 this morning. At 3 o'clock, the models changed. At 4 o'clock, the models changed. This is the first time that I've actually gone about five hours without really having to adjust it too much. So things are starting to agree there. A lot can change. But meanwhile, in the uh, near term, that cold front that I was showing you, that is going to affect our forecast in the immediate near term. So our next weather alert day and we never do this when there's going to be a significant impact for you we have a chance for thunderstorms some could be severe some gusty winds but also some heavier downpours the main reason why i am really want to double back to go weather alert here is because the last time it rained here in charlotte for a measurable rainfall was 16 days ago whenever you do not have rain for at least a week and a half up to two weeks, all those oils that are on the surface, they settle. But once you have a rain, especially a significant rain, all those oils come to the surface, where you're two to three times more likely to get into an accident after a dry spell once it first rains, compared to if you have constant rain. And I saw this earlier, actually, in the summer. We hadn't seen rain for over a week, and there was a one downpour literally that took up the entire 485 loop. I, uh, my wife was going to the dentist office mm. and she says from North Charlotte to Harrisburg, she saw nine accidents of people sliding off the road. This is the reason why I want people to be weather alert for your Thursday afternoon and Thursday night, because that first rain is going to be impactful. And when you have a, a setup like that, it's been dry, things are gonna be slicker than people notice. And also the problem with uh, the Charlotte area in general is that you have people that have lived here all their lives and you have people that are used to driving on the New Jersey Turnpike. So people are driving at different speeds and that's just chaotic in general. We were just mentioning about the incidents that happened earlier this morning. Majestic had a nightmare of a traffic report and it's dry. So I just want everyone to really note that I know it's just rain, most likely. You do have an outside storm chance, could be a heavier downpour, but trust me, you have a much higher chance for an incident Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, and again into Friday morning. So there it is. So our excessive rain impacts outside of this are going to keep that low chance over the coming days because of, uh, in general, just a chance for a front to linger and then also that upper level low. There's a lot of uncertainties about how much rain we're going to see from all the systems, but the near term is a little bit more settled. So first off, we're going to be dealing with some on and off rain showers and thunderstorms in the mountains, the foothills. We saw this yesterday. Charlotte saw nothing. Charlotte's not going to see anything today. But then once you get to your Thursday morning, here, I'll move it to right about midnight. That's when you're talking about widespread rain up in the mountains and the foothills. That rain, I think, is going to be short-lived because once the sun rises up, I think we're going to be clear. Once that clears, if the winds are on the calmer end, we're talking about more patchy, dense fog like what we had earlier this morning. But then here comes the cold front. At that 
that point, I think you could see scattered light to moderate rain showers, decaying thunderstorms within this line that will push into the Charlotte area. Then once it interacts with the heat and instability, that's where you're seeing a chance for thunderstorms, really between about 2 and 8 specifically. That's kind of changed for the timing there. And then you're going to be dealing with on and off showers and storms through the overnight heading through your Friday as well. So wrapping this up with a bow, on and off storm chances really begin for the Charlotte area starting on Thursday afternoon, and then really anything goes. But as I already showed you for that surface map, I'll roll tape one more time. You have a lot going on here on the map from the surface fronts to the upper level situations to tropical systems. So what I'm about to show you on the seven day forecast, I said will change. Right now, this looks very generic. I have the upper 70s. It's going to be on the more humid side in the near term, but we have the upper 70s through the week. Weekend heading into next week. Now, that's not necessarily going to be, hey, it's immediately feeling dry because believe it or not, it's actually going to be on the humid side for today because today, 91 degrees is what I have for a high. Yesterday, we had a high of 89.1. Yeah, that's right. We can do back to the decimal. I usually just don't share it. But 91 looks mm -hmm. to be the high today. That likely is going to be the hottest temperature that we're going to have for the rest of the year. I know that sounds dramatic, but it's very rare for us to hit 90 in October. We've done I believe 15 times in Charlotte history. The latest we've ever done it is October 13th. But if you look at the long range forecast, and I am going to show you that, everything's trending way down. But as far as the most humid days, now this could adjust itself. All you need is another tropical system roll in that completely puts this kaput. But in the near term, notice how we hit that 70 point for our dew points. That is going to be a lot of mugginess that's going to be heading our way. So we are going to see a big time uptick on that. So today, tomorrow, and your Friday look to be turning more of a muggy forecast. That's also gonna keep some milder lows, but then slowly but surely, we're gonna wind things down. If we didn't have these tropical systems to the east, we likely would clear the front and it would be much drier, it would be feeling much better. The earlier forecast was actually generally looking at that, but instead we're gonna still keep the moisture around. So in general, uh, without me really saying it, but I will for transparency purposes, truly we don't know absolutely what's going to happen uh, by the weekend and beyond because so many different scenarios could play out. But I already showed you the one with the potential weak uh, Fujiwara push out and the driving of the Heisman Trophy trying to get the system out of here. But one thing that we know for sure is that today is the top. This is hump day heat as we use for one of our teases because 91 degrees is for sure the top because we have more of the cloud cover tomorrow. It will be another hot and humid day still because 86 could feel like 90 degrees with that muggy air. But look where temperatures go. We level out in the upper 80s and I think another system could drag in even some drier air. We're talking about highs only in the lower 70s potentially for the 2nd and 3rd of October. So when I say that, yeah, we could get back to 90, but at this point, I think this might be it. All right, 91. What is it? High, what were you calling it? Oh, hump day heat. Hump day heat. Hump day heat, yeah. All right, one last mm -hmm. Heisman right up, throw. Putting up the Heisman. There we go. Let's, let's go, <laughs> upper level low. Let's go, upper level low. All right, Chris Mulcahy in the Live Impact studio giving it to us uh, the For way. For reals. For real. Uh, we're going to be weather alert. I saw the email mm -hmm. from, uh, from the... You know, from the people that that manage us, mm -hmm. uh, they it is going to be weather alert tomorrow all day with all that rain. Uh, yeah, and uh, I do want to specify that uh, we have weather. I know it's called weather alert day, mm -hmm. but your time to be weather alert for Charlotte is really the I would say after two o'clock through the evening and the overnight. So I'm gonna yeah. say it's uh, the morning, Charlotte doesn't have anything to worry okay. about. You could have some, maybe some rain by the afternoon. So that's why it's mainly afternoon and evening. Yes, it's a weather alert day, but I want people to know specifically when we're expecting the best chance for those heavier downpours and the rough driving conditions. Love the clarification, Chris Mulcahy. Got you. All right, he's got us all the time. <laughs>